Hello everyone, welcome back to the Team Galactic Podcast, creating a newer and better world, not just for you, but also your Pokemon. We're your hosts, I'm Andrew, and I'm Justin, and today we're going to be talking a lot about the Pokemon universe, and more so on that we would do if the Pokemon universe was real, like different types of universes, like the anime universe, manga universe, so on and so forth, and also we're going to talk about our favorite Pokemon. Just more about us and who we are, and speaking of that, Andrew, so I know last time you kind of were a little bit vague on your beginnings of Pokemon, right? So, do yeah. you want to do you want to go more in depth with that on like why you stopped on um, like that time period kind of thing? Cuz you mentioned some religious stuff like like don't go like too in depth, you know, like being in like the controversial territory, but you know, if you want to talk about it, go for it. Yeah, so I'm trying to remember what I think it might have been a Monday. So I think we went to church and everything was fine. And then mom went back to church because she works there. Mm-hmm. I did play Pokemon Blue version because that's the friend. But my friend had that one. We were kind of like taking turns on it. And I had it like some of the cards. I was a kid. Everyone gave their extras to and the parents would complain. But it's like, mom, I don't need seven Pidgeys. <laughs> you know? right? So I got everybody's extras. And it was kind of cool. I remember having the... Hollow, Clefairy, and the Snorlax. I thought it was cool because it was like silver. It was sparkly. Mm -hmm. But I was playing with my friends. And then, I don't know, just mom came home and was like, you can't play Pokemon. Can't do anything that has magic, summoning, any of that. And I was just confused by what it was. And she was like, oh, Pikachu is like supposed to be a squirrel or something and the devil changed it and I'm like that makes no sense these are monsters in some alternate universe right so that's part of why I was like not able to play uh, gen 3 and 4 which doesn't sound like a lot but when you look at how many games are from 2000 to 2010 that's that's a long time to not play anything Pokemon yeah for sure like, you have the entire second generation, which was Gold, Silver, Crystal. And then the third generation, which was Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald, Fire, Red, and Leaf Green. And then you go into the fourth generation, which was Diamond, Pearl, Platinum, Heart Gold, and Soul Silver, the remakes from Johto, actually. And then when you're getting back into Black and White, that's when 2010 rolls around. So you're missing three complete generations, pretty much. Yeah, like I knew of Crystal because someone had the cartridge and I was like, that's cool, it's clear, the back had like a symbol on it, but I didn't really play it. Mm. Going back to Crystal, like like I said last time, that um, the first Pokemon game that I kind of laid my eyes on, you know, the first Pokemon Suicune, the mascot for it, that really sparked my love for Pokemon. So Suicune will always have that special place in my heart because of that. That's why, uh, was it Gen 3 and 4? It was kind of hard to pick Pokemon. I mean... I'm looking at my list and it seems like everyone's meta team is what I picked, but <laughs> I didn't really play those games, so it's like mm-hmm. I don't have experience going, I like this Pokemon, I have that Pokemon. There are a few I looked at and I'm like, I like this because it looks cool, and that's why I picked them. Yeah, so um, so you wanted to us to have like around six Pokemon for each generation that we kind of wanted to talk about, like that being like our favorite Pokemon, right? Yeah, so it's kind of like, you know pick your favorite six of a team or something. I, I just picked whatever I liked. It was hard for some of the generations. Yeah, like for me, um, like I got six for like each generation up to generation seven. And um, then I could only get one. And then gen eight, of course, I got se- um, six. And then um, gen nine, because we don't know much about it. We know about maybe 24, 25 uh, new Pokemon, right? So um, yeah. I think it was 29 the last time I count the other day. Um, and I only found two that I actually really like um, of all the new generation nine Pokemon. But um, so you want to start us off with gen one or should I? Um, you can start. Okay. For me, my absolute like favorite, favorite Pokemon just based upon like what I've used them in the games, just my love for them overall, would have to be Venusaur, Fearow, Poliwrath, 
Victribel, Hitmonlee, and Mewtwo. Nice. So that's um, a very uh, well balanced team there. Thank you. Um, other than the Mewtwo, of course. <laughs> Mewtwo yeah. Friggin' busted. But um, it, the- it was in Gen One. I remember that someone had Mewtwo, mm-hmm. and that's the only counter to one of my favorite Pokemon. Yeah, Gengar, right? Yeah, because no one knew how to counter Gengar. They're like, I give up, I surrender. And I'm like, eh, okay, I win. Thanks. So, did you actually know in the original Gen 1 games, Psychic didn't actually um, work against Ghost? Or um, yeah. Ghost, Ghost didn't actually work against Psychic in um, either one? <laughs> That's why no one could beat my Gengar until someone got Mewtwo. Uh-huh. <laughs> it was great. And then, um, there were a lot of broken stuff about Gen 1. Like, going back on it, I just cannot... I've tried to play Gen 1 many times after the fact, and I cannot, for the life of me, want to go back to Gen 1. The, it is so broken, the mechanics are so awful, the game is so slow, some things didn't even work right, and it just doesn't feel like a proper way to do things with Pokemon for me. And the same thing yeah, about like Gen, um, going, Gen 2. Going back to Gen 1, after playing black and white, I was like, this is hard. I am struggling. Mm-hmm. You had to like actually pre-plan your moves and what you're going to do, and leveling up to forever. Oh yeah, for sure. It was definitely very slow, slow-paced. Um, everything was slow-paced, I think, until um, Platinum, when they started to kind of really pick things up. Because it's like you compare the speed of Diamond and Pearl compared to Platinum just by the health bar alone. God, so so much different. And then um, also just like the surfing speed of Diamond and Pearl and Platinum, it's just different, different. Yeah. But um, so what are your six favorite Pokemon for Gen One? Um, most of these I actually use when I play uh, Gen One. Mm-hmm. It's a weird team, but I like Articuno. Porygon, Gengar, Cloyster, Beedrill, and Blastoise was my starter as a kid, and I always liked Blastoise because it reminded me of a boss in Donkey Kong 64 called Armadillo. It was basically an armadillo that had cannons on the side, and I was like, this thing has cannons on the side. This is kind of cool. Mm. They, um, very cool, the, um, a tortoise slash um, turtle Pokemon. I'm not really a big fan of um, Blastoise, just because I, I just don't have any attachment to it, and just I just don't like Blastoise as a Pokemon in general. I don't like Squirtle, yeah. and I don't like War Squirtle, and I don't like Blastoise. So um, everyone loves Charizard, though. I do not. I'm, I'm <laughs> sorry. I hate Charizard. You're one of the, you're, you're one of the few people that does it, and it's like good because. Yeah, I'm the minority. Like, I feel, I feel Charizard's like overhyped. Oh, he is. In TCG. For sure. For sure. Um, and it's just because he's a fire lizard. A dragon. Mm-hmm. Like, who like who in their right mind wouldn't like a fire lizard that's just a dragon that's really cool? Who isn't even a dragon type, by the way? Yeah, that's, that's the funny part. He's just a fire flying type. He will never... Well, actually, no. One of his... Was it X, Y? Mm-hmm. One of his evolutions made him... Technically, dragon. His mega evolution. It's um a fire. Um, his mega Charizard X is fire dragon. Yeah. Now that's cool. I think that's the one I like. That's that's very cool. Um. So you, I, I um heard from a couple Pokemon that kind of um took me by surprise for you liking Porygon and Cloyster. So tell me about those. Like, how come you like them both? Uh, Porygon is just this interesting looking Pokemon compared to others like you have like you know ones that are based on animals and stuff Porygon's like hey we made this thing I was like you made a Pokemon that seems weird Mm -hmm. and the fact that you had to get it through the the rocket hideout in the arcade was just I sat there forever getting it Uh, (laughs) that was a grind yeah and then Cloyster um I think it's actually Pokemon Stadium is why I like Cloyster it just had these really cool animations when it used attacks, mm-hmm. and it also had like ice moves. And not many um, Pokemon in Gen One had ice moves, which is why I picked Articuno of, of the three legendaries. Okay, okay. And, and and if I had to pick one of the three legendary birds, I would honestly pick Moltres, just because I I just love Moltres. It's a fire chicken, 
really cool Pokemon. Yeah. <laughs> um, All the, the silly arts out there, it's like, look at this fire chicken. And um, I, w I would definitely think they did it justice with the Galarian um, form that they gave it, um, the dark fire. I think that looked oh, yeah. really cool. Mm-hmm. I would say the Galarian, definitely Moltres, is the coolest looking one. Yeah, because I, I don't get what they were after with the Zapdos being a fighting type. I, I kind of don't get, like, a little bit of Articuno either. Psychic? It, it just doesn't yeah. feel... It just doesn't feel slash look right to me. No, it doesn't. Like, a fire that's also a dark type, that makes sense. But, like, mm -hmm. a fighting electric that's, like, weak to itself in my mind. It's, like, it's so fight? weird fighting flying yeah yeah it just feels like and the, and the thing about it is is those shinies are actually the kanto um versions of them oh really like the, the actual um artwork and sprites and stuff it's their kanto colors that's their shinies so uh, you know, i will say this right now i never finished sword and shield i'm kind of having to force myself to play it yeah it, it's it, it's god awful like the story is kind of interesting but it's like this feels like a game that's meant for a new generation of Pokemon players, not mm -hmm. someone that's played Pokemon a little bit when it came out and got back into it. My impression on Sword and Shield, very rushed, very underdeveloped, so I couldn't really fully enjoy all of what Sword and Shield had to offer. So very little that I did enjoy, which was um, some of the Dynamax battles on um, the Raid Dens. That's kind of what I did enjoy about it, um, being able to go in the wild area. I wish there was more of that, which we got in the DLC. And what I think they should have done is instead of releasing DLC and making a bunch of money off of it, they should have released that DLC as the base game instead. That would have made Sword and Shield what it was. Like, so yeah. much better. It's like, I even bought the DLC and I didn't mm -hmm. play it. I sh probably should. It's I, like I, I highly got to recommend a point it. and I'm just like, eh. Yeah, I highly recommend the Sword and Shield. The Crown Tundra and the Isle of Armor, they're very good um, additions to um, Pokemon Sword and Shield for the content-wise, the Pokemon-wise, bringing Pokemon back that we haven't seen for a while. Um, it added back, like, the Needle Lines. Um, I think it added back Dawn Fan, too. I'm a big Dawn Fan fan, dude. And, um, yeah, Dolphin's pretty cool. This this brings me into um, going into my um, list for Gen 2. For me, it's Ampharos, Suicune, Typhlosion, Feraligator, Noctowl, and Dawnfan. Those are my nice. like, six cool favorite Pokemon that I really love for Gen 2. My list is somewhat similar. Um, I have Typhlosion, Unknown, Suicune, Porygon 2, Scizor, and Umbreon. Okay. Umbreon's pretty standard. The, um, Suicune's pretty standard with me. Um, Typhlosion's pretty cool. Um, Unown. I don't get, um, the Unown pick. Is it because of, the, like, the Entei movie, or what? Um, around that time, I was, like, really into ancient Egyptian mythology. Like, I was, I was so much into it, I was trying to learn how to read hieroglyph. And seeing the unknown being like the ancient language of Pokemon, I was looking at it. I'm like, hey, I like this. Let's learn it. Interesting. Of course, I still struggle to read the unknown language sometimes because the letters kind of like blend in some in of my them. eyes when I'm looking at them. So I'm like, is that a T? Is that a Q? Is that an R? And I have to like look it up and be like, oh, it's going this way. So it's that letter. Mm -hmm. Now, um, the ones that kind of get me is C, G. Um, and then, like, H and, um, another one. I think, um, it's an, I, I can't, I can't remember quite. But they just, um, there are four of them that just kind of feel weird to, like, look at. And I have to kind of yeah, look at, like, Yeah, there's some that are obvious, like, oh, that's X, this mm -hmm. one's I, that one's an exclamation point. Then you have others, and it's like, I don't know what this one is. Right, right. <laughs> So, how about you lead us off into Gen 3? Gen 3. So, uh, my starter is going to be Blaziken. I picked Metagross, Sableye, Salamence, Registeel, which was hard to pick only one of those, and then Dusclops, the, the ghost type. 
Oh really? You're a Duskhawk fan? I like Ghost Pokemon. No, I, I get that. It, it's just I I just wasn't expecting you to like Dusclops. Well, I like Dust Skull, and then I evolved it. I'm like, this is neat. And then I evolved it again. It was like, this is a ghost mummy, which, you know, ancient Egyptian mm -hmm. mythology. It's like, this is cool. I like this. And um, the thing about um, it, it, um, in the Pokemon anime, they actually did a um episode where um Dust Noir and Curlio were not Curlio, Rolts, were actually taking people into the spirit world, like kids. Just snatching them and taking them into the spirit world. It's an actual Pokemon anime episode. Oh, so that wasn't a meme picture no, that it, I saw, where Professor Zotza was like, I want to see the spirit world too, and he was just like, yoink. So, um, kinda, yeah. Basically, it was, um, during, like, the middle of the Diamond and Pearl, um, saga kind of thing. I, I would highly recommend, like, looking into it, um, I, I could get the episode name later and we can put it in, like, um, just on screen or whatever for, um, whenever we edit this. Yeah. Like a screenshot of, like, the screen, um, the episode name and stuff whenever I find it. Um, yeah, that sounds good. So, speaking of Diamond and Pearl, this is kind of like, um, oh wait, I didn't even say my Gen 3 picks, lol. Lol. Okay, so my th Gen 3 picks are Sceptile, Blaziken, Shiftry, Tropius, Cacturn, and Crawdon. Hmm. Those are nice. Grass is my favorite type. I, I'm yeah. always, I've always been like a person who loves grass Pokemon. It's just an, also within my personality of being like very cool and calm, but also protective and kind of like the overarching kind of like I'm the gatekeeper here. I watch what goes kind of thing. Venusaur actually takes that role in many different places. It's taken the role in the anime with Bulbasaur, uh, Ash's Bulbasaur, whenever they meet. Later in the anime with like Ivysaur. And then also in one of the Pokemon spin-off games, Poke Park Wii, Pikachu's Adventure. Venusaur is actually like a zone keeper or something, whatever it's called. Nice. And you have to like get its friend um friend code from it. Grass has always just been a fun type for me to look at, and then I've just always kind of like enjoyed Crawdont. Water Dark I think is a really cool typing, and then it's a, like a crab that's really cool. Cacturn Grass Dark again really cool, just like Shiftry. Um, Cacturn has a cool design. I like the Scarecrow design for it. I think it fits yeah. really, really well, like a Scarecrow plus Cactus. And then Cacnea is really cute. Um, Shiftry, I love, um, I love, like, the jungle theme with it. It's so cool. Tropius is the one that looks like a, a palm tree or something, right? Um, uh, it looks like, um, one of those herbivore dinosaurs that have, okay. um, the wings. Um, like, four little grass wings on it. It's grass flying, by the way. It needs to be a dragon type. It needs to be a grass dragon type. You mean the future? We don't know. Because, like, it's a dragon. It's an actual dragon, but it it's not a dragon type. That that's odd, but we know how Pokemon is. Yeah, it's just like Gyarados is a um a sea creature, yet it's not a water dragon type. It is a water flying type. Yeah. It needs. Or to other be... ones where it's it's like their typing doesn't add up, and it's like, why isn't it this typing? Yep. Like, perfect mm. example earlier, Charizard, Gyarados. Yeah. yeah. Why Why is Sceptile pure dark instead of grass dark? It I, should be grass dark. It should be with the, um, it's a gecko that moves through the forest that blazingly fast, hopping through the trees. Like, basically, essentially kind of like a ninja, but not really a ninja. Really cool. Yeah. And then, um, just Blaziken. I just always enjoy Blaziken. He's just a really cool Pokemon. Firefighting. Yeah. I don't care how many I, fire I like fighters fire types. Have. Almost all my uh, starters were were fire types. And um, I I didn't have to. We didn't have to pick starters. I was just picking starters just because they were cool. I really liked them. So um, yeah, I I just added that because it's always one of the ones I'm going to pick for my mm -hmm. favorites. So um, next is Gen Four. Now, I actually have. 
double the list, basically, for Gen 4. Oh boy. So, essentially, because I, um, I love Generation 4's Pokemon. I don't like Sinnoh at all. Um, and this generation also brought me my favorite game of all time, Heart Gold and Soul Silver. So, it allowed me to have so many different Pokemon that I just love. I listed six and I'm like, oh, there are so many good Pokemon I just want to use that I just want to yeah, have on my team. That's how some of my uh, Pokemon lists are going to be after, like, uh, black and white. Mm -hmm. There's so many I'm like, I use this or I liked how it uh, was. I like the moves it used, things like that. And it was hard to narrow down to just six. Yeah, really hard. So for me, for Gen 4, um, the six that I in initially chose was Infernape, Staraptor, Honchkrow, Dust Noir, Darkrai, and Electivire. After that, I ended up um, putting Magmortar, Magnezone, Drapion, Giratina, Frostlass, and Leafeon. Nice. Th those are all my Gen 4 picks. Um, I love Dust Noir, it's my favorite ghost type. Um, Darkrai is my favorite dark type. Infernape, really cool fire Pokemon. I think he's my favorite fire Pokemon. Possibly my favorite fire Pokemon. And my favorite rock type Pokemon will come later. Um, in Generation 8, which is my, probably my favorite Generation 8 Pokemon of all time. And then we have like Giratina. Leafeon was my favorite evolution actually for a long time. Yeah, Leafeon's kind of nice. So, the reason why Leafeon changed is because of the Pokemon trading card game. That was when I used Sylveon, and it became my favorite evolution. Remember that Sylveon deck you had? Oh yeah, it was great. I loved it. Troll, Mill, definitely ugly, ugly. Yeah, it took me forever to figure out how to get around all that stuff, too. So, let me hear your Gen 4s. <laughs> I'm probably going to get a lot of hate for this because it's like everyone's meta but remember i didn't really play this game i just looked at the cards and was like okay this is cool okay okay let me, let, okay you probably have garchomp uh-huh infernape of course yep miss magius probably nope oh really not on this list yeah not on this list wow i, I would figure you'd be a miss magius guy I, I that would be number seven honestly if i was picking more oh really yeah. The all good? Uh, no, actually, it's Giratina. Okay. Alright, so, what are your other three? I uh, have Lucario, Togekiss, and Porygon Z. Ah, right, right. Togekiss, I think, is um, an underrated pick. Not many people like Togekiss, actually, I think. Just from my personal like... experience. Yeah, I like Togekiss, um... Not only from just the pictures and a little bit of the gameplay, but that was my first perfect Pokemon mm. in Pokemon Go. Right, right. I remember that. If you if you want, like you can throw up on screen the picture of the like the perfect um, Togekiss just to sh show what it looks like. Yeah, I got it maxed out too, so it's, <laughs> hey, it's, it's a powerhouse. That'd be pretty good. Oh yeah. Weak to fairy. All right, I'm taking you down myself. We're about halfway through the list now, so, um, going through the first four generations, how hard was it for you to pick your favorite Pokemon for each generation? Say Gen 1 and 2 was pretty easy, but, like, Gen 3 and 4 was hard to narrow it down because I didn't really play the games. Mm -hmm. So I picked the ones I know, and I'm like, I know this Pokemon, I like this Pokemon. But then it was hard to pick, like, three or four others because I don't know the Pokemon or I don't know how they work. You know, stuff like that. And if you had to, like, rearrange your list, what generation would you rearrange and change, like, certain Pokemon on? Like, I know that you're, um, they're your favorite. Like, what would you add more? I'd say probably Gen 4. I would probably play that one, just so I don't have, like, the meta Pokemon that everyone picked. I, I, I definitely could picture you as either a Torterra or an Empoleon kind of guy, actually. Yeah, Empoleon's pretty cool. I'd probably pick Empoleon if I wasn't picking fire types. Because Empoleon, the Emperor Steel Penguin, um, the Emperor Penguin yeah, Pokemon. Yeah, 
is it is it ice and steel or water, water and steel. steel water steel and so yeah which is an interesting combo the pokemon starters will always be pure like primary type as um water fire or grass and then probably sometimes have a secondary type some didn't have a secondary type some do just depends for me i think for gen 2 would i would have to add a couple pokemon to it um, Gen 2, I would probably add Espeon and Kingdra. Two, Those are some good ones. Two really cool Pokemon. Kingdra's Water Dragon, very bulky, good typing. Um, resist, um, neutral to electric because um, Dragon resists it and Water's weak to it, so it's neutral. And then it's just stats are really good for its type. And then Espeon... I just love Psychic Pokemon. Certain Psychic Pokemon, though, I would I would definitely really like Espeon. Espeon is my favorite evolution of Gen 2. I don't I don't unfortunately like Umbreon. I just don't think it's a cool Pokemon. It's shiny, great though. The the blue around I um, around it like um, where the yellow is is so cool to me. For um, me, for like picking Pokemon for like one Gen one through four. Obviously, you see that Gen 4 was hard for me to pick because I have two, like, entirely lists just for Gen 4. Yeah. Um, Gen 3 was actually pretty easy for me. I would probably have to add Flygon and Melodic to it just because Melodic's a, the, beautif the beauty Pokemon, basically, and Flygon's just a really cool dragon type. But I, I don't like mm -hmm. very many Gen 3 Pokemon. Gen 1 was very easy for me. I don't care for many Gen 1 Pokemon. Like, I, I, I had um, a hard enough time picking from Gen 1 as it was. Of course, I'm always going to have my boy Venusaur, Polyrath, and Hitmonlee. And I do I do like Victory Bell but the, and Mewtwo, but I just couldn't really find that, like, suitable last slot. Like, I guess you could say, like, an honorable mention is, like, Muck. Really cool. I really like Muck. I don't like it to low in form, though. Now, looking at Gen Generation 5. So, the sixth Pokemon that I picked is probably a, a few uncommon ones that you would find on people's lists. There's Embor, okay. Seismitoad, mm -hmm. Levani, Vanillux, Verizium, and Bisharp. What is your Gen 5, sir? So, Gen 5 is when I got back into it because I saw a, someone watching a trailer for it, and it was weird. It looked 3D, but it looked like the old-style yeah. uh, pixels, and I'm like, this is kind of cool. It's like a fusion. So I ended up did getting the game and playing it, and I picked uh, Superior, which is my first grass-type starter, not picking Fire. Genesect, Zorark, Chandelure, Scrafty, and Haxorus. Kind of a dark type team here. Why Scrafty? I don't know. I just like Scrafty. I don't really have a reason. Okay. I just thought I'd ask. I think it's one of the like first few Pokemon I ran into, and I was like, you're mine. And it evolved, and I'm like, eh, we're going to have some fun with this guy. Yeah, and um, that was also one of the first Pokemon that you made out of a Pokemon deck whenever I started teaching you again. Yeah, that, <laughs> that deck was... <laughs> Using Call for Family and stuff like that, that was so funny. Do you still have that on TCGO? Like, do you still have it saved as, like, your first deck? No. I was purging my deck list because, you know, they're like, Hey, we're getting rid of Pokemon TCGO, everyone's going to live. Uh-huh. Okay. I saved some of my decks, but not a whole lot of them. I, I just I just wanted to ask, and I was, like, kind of curious on how just how that deck went because i kind of don't really remember all too much of i wonder if we have a picture of it anywhere like in facebook messages or anything we might just because we were we don't we, have to see we were just so into it maybe a group chat that we were both in at one point yeah and i had limited cards so i literally used whatever i had to mm -hmm. try and make something so for me i actually love vanillax i know I know it's an ice cream cone, but hear me <laughs> out. It I is, think that's why people like it. It is a cool ice cream cone. <laughs> no pun intended. But no, I um I actually used Vanillax in a playthrough of Pokemon um White. Um one of my first playthroughs, and I just really enjoyed it. So funny enough, I actually used Sir um Snivy for my first playthrough of White. I don't like Snivy. 
I don't like Servine and I don't like Super Superior. I really love Ambor and yeah. the Tepig line. Um, a boar Pokemon that, that evolved from a pig, that's so cool to me. And yeah, it's bipedal, which means stand on two legs, but I don't care. And yes, it's another firefighting type. I don't care. Yeah, Pokemon has a lot of firefighting types. Like, everyone's like, here's a new game, here's a new starter, and everyone's like, please don't be firefighting, and mm -hmm. it's firefighting. Like, like, um, we're hoping that Foy Coco isn't a firefighting type, which I don't think it's going to be. I think what it's going to happen is it's going to be fire grass. <laughs> that would be an interesting combo. Uh-huh. Um, I think Sprigatito is going to um, end up just being pure grass, and we kind of already know by the moveset that Quaxley is going to be water flying. We kind of already know. So moving on with Gen 6. Gen 6 is kind of where I couldn't think of two extra Pokemon in the regional list, so I went straight into Mega Evolution. So, mm. I have Sylveon, Pangoro, Noivern, Phantom, not Trevenant, Phantom, mm. Mega Venusaur, and Mega Ampharos. And if you'll notice from that list, I don't have any of the Gen 6 starters. I don't like Chestnut. I don't think it's a cool design. I think they could have done something better with it instead of making squirrel honey badger type with the shell. I just didn't like what they did. Delphox, I like that they made it like a fire wizard that's really cool, really interesting. I liked what they did with Greninja. I loved Greninja in the anime, Ash's Greninja. I just yeah. couldn't find a place in my heart to put any of these Pokemon, any of the starters there, on my list of favorite Pokemon. Just because I really, um, what I really enjoyed about Gen 6, that was a big wave of excitement for me. So this is coming back when they were fully rebooting the God and Catch 'em All phrase and everything. I don't think that you fully understood, like, gratification of just how big X and Y was supposed to be. They modeled the Santa Loon Forest after Viridian Forest. It was supposed Ooh. to be, like, a full reboot of Pokemon. And then when I saw Mega Evolution, like, that was so cool because it's old Pokemon that I could trade up, that I could trade and transfer up and use so, I had played through Fire Red right before X and Y when I heard that, like, my old Pokemon will get Mega Evolution. Venusaur was getting one. Meg Ampharos was getting one. Like, my two favorite Pokemon from the first generation, um, for a couple generations, were getting Mega Evolutions. I'm like, whoa! That is so rad! I'm going to use these! I didn't even think of Mega Evolutions when I made my list. I think I played X and Y like twice, so I was like, I'm going back to black and white, just because I enjoyed it so much. I actually didn't. I actually don't like black and white. What What is your list for Generation 6? I have Delphox, so my starters are going back to fire types. Trevenant, Selvion, Heliolisk, Aegislash, and Noivern. Okay. So, the thing is, I like, um, Phantom, and you like Trevenant, that's kind of weird. Yeah. Kind of like a funny, kind of <laughs> weird. I like the baby, um, the first stage evolution, which is actually just a spirit of a baby, or a child, that died. Yeah. I think, I picked Trevenant because I was getting, like, into Lord of the Rings again. So oh, where? Like, oh, this is a ghost type, and it reminds me of the, the trees from Lord of the Rings. I'm like, I have to pick this, it's so cool. Oh, that's pretty cool. And then, um, Aegislash being one of your favorite Pokemon reminds me of Mauricio. He loves Aegislash, dude. Whenever we played, yeah. whenever he played, we played Pokemon, he mained Aegislash. He loves Steel types. Steel is his favorite type. I remember seeing the first forms like, oh, it's a sword, okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a better sword. Oh, it's a sword and a shield now, and it's like, what? Yeah, um, Aegislash, Dow Blade, which is literally double blade. That's why it's sorting for Dow Blade. Yeah. Double blade. Combine double blade together, you get the double blade. And then Aegislash, which is the sword and shield. Which, a lot of um, video games, they use the Aegis shield as, like, 
kind of like that, so I think that's where they um, got Aegislash from. So, for me, I spent a lot of time in Gen 6. This is where I really started getting into the VGC competitive Pokemon, like, fully. I kind of understood a little bit about it in Gen 4 and 5, but Gen 6 was when I took it by storm. I was transferring Pokemon, I was meeting new people, made all of the friends that I used to have now. Like, there's a couple friends that I have back from, like, 2013, 2014 that I still, still can talk to to this day who I met IRL a few years ago. Yeah. Never forget that. The, the memories I've made with Pokemon has changed my life significantly. I never would have met so many people if it wasn't for Pokemon. Like I wouldn't, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't have the friend, most of the friends that I have today, if it wasn't because of Pokemon. Pokemon has just been so influential in my life and just changing everything for the better. Yeah, I feel if I didn't do Pokemon, I probably wouldn't have met you. Probably not. I mean, we, we were in class and um, we were doing Cards Against Humanity and having um friendship time though. Yeah. Probably just wouldn't be as good friends as we are now. Probably not. I don't know, man. I'm, I'm. Whenever I meet people and I become friends with them, I'm pretty, pretty into it. Friends. We wouldn't have had that D and D session though. We wouldn't have that that storyline. That was funny. Yeah. So moving on with Generation Seven. I could only pick one Pokemon. I don't like anything else with Gen Seven. I'm not gonna lie. Alola was one of, if not the weakest region for me, in terms of Pokemon mm. design. I used many different Pokemon, I don't like them. Yeah, I, I had a hard time picking two, because I'm like, I have my three that I'm always going to pick. Mm. But I had to think about others, where it's like, I like the story of it, or I like the design of it, which, you know, was kind of hard to go through as well. So, for me, the only Pokemon I like in Gen 7, which is obvious if you know me, is Decidueye. Yep, your owl. Yes, sir! So, who are the Pokemon that you pick? Um, Incineroar, which is my starter. Vicavolt, because I like it. It looks like a freaking aircraft. It's so cool looking. Okay. Uh, Buzzwall, Pokemon TCG. Uh, Savali and Type Null, I couldn't really pick one or the other, just because I feel the lore between the two is connected to both, so you kind of have to have both. Mm -hmm. And then, Galissapod and Cosmog. Oh really, Cosmog? Is it because yeah, of Nebby? Like the... Is it because of Nebby? I like the little, like, galaxy pattern it has on it. Okay. And, they get... and you like Lily, right? Like, get in the bag Nebby kind of thing? Yeah, which is funny, because, like, the memes out of it's like, why doesn't he like his bags? Like, I don't know, maybe because you have 30,000 repels in there. And then, um, Cosmoam is, like, so friggin' heavy, dude. And you got, like, Lily and, just picking just it up pick with the bag. In the, in the anime, right? They just pick him up like uh -huh. it's nothing. I mean, Ash... It's like, how much does he... Here, I'm gonna look up the weight of him. I mean, Ash picks up Larvitar. Literally in the anime, hold Larvitar, and Larvitar Ash is like... Ash is on drugs, he has to be. <laughs> like, Larvitar is like 600, like, 800 pounds, bro. Yeah, so Cosmoam, number 790, is 2,204.4 pounds. Uh-huh. And they just picked him up like it was nothing. I think it's because of the telekinetic powers. I have no idea about Larvitar, though. <laughs> How Ash could just, like, bench press him. Bro, Ash is <laughs> yacked, I swear. Oh, Larvitar's 159 pounds, so that's actually feasible, but... He's a 10-year-old boy. Uh, he has to be on drugs. Larvitar is huge, bro. Mm -hmm. Huge! It's, uh, the anime makes no sense in a lot of the logic it has. Yes. Unfortunately, yes. Okay. It's like, wait, weren't they talking about this in the other episode? And it's like, shh, no, they weren't. Shut up. <laughs> okay, so, our next generation, Generation 8. Hmm. Let the Galar region, right? Yes, sir, Galar. What did you pick for your Generation 8 Pokemon? Uh, 
So, like I said earlier, I didn't really play... I didn't play it too much. So, I picked Cinderace, which is my starter. Corviknight. Colossal. I just think that thing looks really cool. Uh, Thievil. I like foxes, so I obviously picked that. Dragapult is interesting. And Eternatus is also cool looking. Okay. Okay. So, do you like the... Um... <laughs> The Eternamax Eternatus, or do you like just regular Eternatus? I've not seen the Max one, so I'd have to... The TCG card. Oh, oh, the VMAX, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That one's, that one's kind of cool, too. I just wish there was, like, better art to see it clear. Um, that would be, like, in the games and, like, also official promo art, as well as what's about to happen in the anime. Which I need to start watching from the very first episode. Uh, the, the best the best thing I can tell you is start from the beginning of Pokemon Journeys. That is all, right. all up to date with everything. Um, Pokemon doesn't really go back much, so you're not really missing a lot of the um, the before parts. Okay. Mm -hmm. So for Gen 8 for me is Inteleon. Surfetched, Reggie Drago, Corb Knight, Cinderace, and my absolute favorite Galarian Pokemon, Carcoal. Nice. I love trains. I absolutely Indeed obsessed. you do. I'm absolutely obsessed with trains. Trains and Pokemon. And Carcoal is literally the embodiment of a tender. It is so yeah. cool. I love it. With Colossal, Carpool, and Roly Coley. With yeah! It, with it turning from cool into a tender, into like a, a Victorian era type um, big tender thing, um, which I think they should have done into a train. I think that's what yeah. it's supposed to be, but you know, it could have been a lot better executed. If they better executed, I would love Colossal instead, but Carpool is, is great for me. Yeah, some pretty interesting ones. So that wraps up like all the generations that we've seen everything now. Now let's go into Gen 9. I only listed two Pokemon. So did I. The legendary Pokemon Maridon, <laughs> and then Cerulege, mm. which is that it's... that blue um, knight looking Pokemon. That is so cool. Yeah, I listed those two as well, and Sprig Sprigatito, is that how you say it? Yeah, um, the grass um, starter, yes. Yeah, that's what I'm picking. It looks like a fox. I cannot not pick it, you know? <laughs> it's a weed cat, yeah. <laughs> I can't wait. I can't either. It's, it's good. And, and from what I've seen from reviews and everything else, it, it's going to be um, really excellent games. And I think they come out next week, right? Today is the second, which is when we're recording this. It's a Wednesday. Does it come out the 11th? Yeah, so it comes out next week. Yeah, next, so next our, Friday. Our, our next episode will actually be a complete wrap-up of Pokemon Sword and Shield. I mean, not Sword and Shield. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. We're going to go over all the information pertaining to the games, the anime, the CCG, everything Scarlet and Violet. So if you don't want any spoilers, I would definitely recommend skipping that episode. But... We are going to be talking about everything leading up to the games. Because there, there's a lot to talk about. Oh yeah, they've shown a lot of Pokemon, which I think is a more lot than of they've Pokemon, done for a lot of footage, other games. A lot of interviews, um, there's extra content, that, like extra footage that we haven't seen yet, as well as like videos um, and information pertaining to the Pokemon. Um, so, like, that's going to be a big episode, and I really have wanted to talk about Scarlet and Violet um, yeah. for these past couple episodes, but Andrew's like, yeah, let's do um, Scarlet and Violet after this, and I'm like, okay, that sounds cool. Um, okay. Yeah, because Scarlet and Violet has a whole lot of stuff, and it's like, the game's not even out, but we've seen so many things. Mm -hmm. It's it's a lot to cram in with, hey, we're going to talk about our favorite Pokemon and Scarlet and Violet. And the thing is, the games haven't even leaked yet. Usually, no. by this time, the games leak. At least, getting close to it. 
I mean, the most I would say is some some people are like, I got to play the game for an hour, and this is my opinion uh, of it. That's probably as close as a leak as we have right now. Yeah, um, usually, and um, leading up to about like maybe a few days before, like maybe the Monday before, it's yeah. the entire game is basically leaked. I don't know what Nintendo, what the Pokemon Company and Game Freak have done, um, but nothing has like gotten out. They probably lock down their servers after all of that huge Nintendo leak and everything else. They're like, hey, we need extra security ourselves. Yeah, and, um, people not taking anything home, you know, like, no possibility of leaks. Like, it is all really interesting. Um, this is probably one of the better kept games that I've seen in a long time for Pokemon. Because usually, mm -hmm. um, with the past few games... Pokemon um, has just dropped the ball and letting information just completely all slip out. There's still a yeah. bunch of info that we don't know. There's a lot we don't know yet. So I'm excited for this one because I'd like it to be that way. Mm -hmm. It's going to be definitely interesting. So um, now let, let's start moving into the second half of our, um, our topic today. Talking about the Pokemon world and what we would do if Pokemon existed in our world, if we went into, or oh, and if we went into the Pokemon universes themselves. Mm -hmm. So, what would you do in the Pokemon world? Like, what would you do if Pokemon became real for us? What would you do, Andrew? So you're saying like our world right now, somehow Pokemon just magically appeared yes. in it and now everyone's like, hey, what are we doing? That yeah. kind of stuff? Yeah. Ah, that's hard to think about because there's a lot of things we could do. I mean, I feel I'd probably be hanging out in a graveyard. So I like ghost Pokemon, you know, especially Gengar. So it might be a grave taker. I'm. You know, it really depends on, like, what's in our region, because I feel the whole world would have different Pokemon in different areas. Okay. You know? So, um, let's use Pokemon Go's region as a basis. Okay. So basically, everything spawns everywhere with a select few. Yeah. Like, there's so many things I would do, because, like... Well, talk feel... it out with me, talk it out with me. So I feel like, obviously in the Pokemon anime and everything, it's humans and Pokemon working together. There's so many things that we could do in this world with Pokemon that would make things better. Like, construction could be easier using, like, Machamp, Skirters. Um, traffic control might be better. We might not even need cars anymore because people would be using Pokemon to get around. You know? Right. Um, I feel maybe we could learn better medicine and healing stuff from the Pokemon as well. Oh, so there's for sure. that. Now, also take into account the Pokemon Pokedex entries. Would you Your still flume. would you still want to be with um, Ghost Pokemon? Some of them? You know, like Gengar's funny. I feel I feel Gengar would have been great for me years ago when I was fighting depression cuz what I've seen in the anime is Gengar likes to play pranks in a way and make people laugh so I feel he'd try to cheer me up. That's Ash's Gengar. Only Ash's Gengar? So, oh. the, the other... The I other... definitely need to watch Gengar. So, or the um, anime. Gengar, in the anime that isn't Ash's Gengar, loves to follow people's shadow, scare them, and do practical jokes and shit. I still think that'd be fun to have. I'm not especially on Halloween. Hold on, let me let me look up Gengar's Pokedex entry real quick. So when you're talking about entries, what came to mind? I think it's Drifloon. Uh -huh. That it's like, hey, it befriends a child and just floats away with them. Yes. Drifloon? No, definitely not. No, not a Drifloon. Okay, so in the um in the um red, blue, yellow, and stadium, it's um mm -hmm. Pokemon, it's Pokedex entries were. Under a full moon, this Pokemon likes to mimic the shadows of people and laugh at their fright. A Gengar is close by if you feel a sudden chill, it may try to lay a curse on you. Appears to attack people who get lost in mountains. Said to be the culprit behind shadow that laughs in the moonlight. In Gen 2, it steals heat 
from, the surround from its surroundings. If you feel a sudden chill, it is certain that a Gengar appeared. To steal the life of its target, it slips into its prey's shadow and silently waits for an opportunity. Hiding in people's shadows at night, it absorbs their heat. The chill causes might ca um, cause it may makes the victim shake. It steals heat from its surrounding. If you feel a sudden chill, it's certain that Gengar is here. And then um, it just talks about um, laying curses on people, overtaking their shadows, stealing heat from people. That's Gengar. Huh. I did completely forget about those entries. And Pokemon Legend Arceus, which is the most recent game that we have, possesses potential victim shadows in an effort to steal away the victim's lives. If your shadow begins to laugh, you may need to take hold of a protector charm cross um, post haste. Post haste. Hmm. Yeah. So, Gengar is not a Pokemon with its Pokedex entry that you want to be with. I'm just wondering how they deal with that in the po actual Pokemon world then. Like, there's a lot of messed up Pokemon. Um, like, Lugman and Cargo are hotter than the surface of our planet. Like, the, yeah. the actual surface, not the core. Like, hold on, let me, let me look, because I think, um... I think Slugma is like 212 degrees Ooh. Fahrenheit. It's like, I don't want to get too much into it, but the new uh, ghost dog that they announced, her Scarlet and Violet, like, it's entry. It's like, yeah, no, why is that a thing? Yeah, um, when I watched that video, um, okay, so my cargo, 18,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh. It is literally magma. And you have a chick in the anime who is hugging it. Yeah, I remember Not that. Burning. I've seen that picture. Okay. So, let, let's let throw Pokemon Pokedex entry out the window, right? Okay. Yeah. Um, what would you like to do in the Pokemon um, universe if Pokemon were real for our universe? What would you like to do? I mean, obviously travel all over. That's one of the things I would want to do, because I feel it'd be easier with Pokemon. Mm -hmm. um, maybe get back into construction, because I feel I could handle it if I had help from a Pokemon, versus me doing it just alone. Right. Maybe we'll study the Pokemon, because obviously they are interesting. They are unique creatures. They're all different. So that could be something. What would be, like, your top priority, like, first thing Pokemon becomes real? What are you doing? I don't know. I feel I might be scared at first, because it's like, there's a lot of Pokemon lore we don't know. It's like, how did the world become peaceful with Pokemon? There's the Pokemon world that's mentioned, and it's like, oh yeah, it ended at this time, and then everybody was peaceful. So it's like... What's happening in that little time period where it's not peaceful and they're not getting along? So, um, that's part of, like, actual Pokemon Universe stuff. Um, like, don't count that. Like, just think magically Pokemon just become real one day. What's the first thing you're doing? Probably gonna catch whatever I find. <laughs> this, this is a hard choice, man. Like, <laughs> Well, it's not supposed to be, um... It's supposed to, it's not supposed to be easy, but it's also not supposed to be something you're, um, you haven't thought about in your life. Because whenever, whenever, anybody who has loved Pokemon at any point in their life has always been like, if Pokemon becomes real, day one, here's what I'm doing. I'm going to say travel the world and see new Pokemon, new sites, meet new people. Okay. So that would definitely open up a lot of stuff. So, for me, my life wouldn't change. I wouldn't travel as much. Um, I would be like kind of like a homebody still. I would yeah. maybe have like one or two really faithful Pokemon that I would keep for the rest of my life. I would 
probably go into research and be a professor. That sounds good. Learning everything there is to know about Pokemon. How they move, how they act, their environments, um, what they're um, like, everything. I just mm. really want to, like, engulf myself, kind of like how Professor Oak and stuff throws himself into their research. Or like Tracy or Todd Snap taking pictures, drawing Pokemon, stuff like that. Yeah. For me, that that's interesting. It, it um, also suits my um, ability for learning. That sounds good. And I would, um, would also battle sometimes, but not like make it my priority. I don't think I would go for the gym badges, if there were any, or try to like, no. <laughs> Now, okay, so the next the next question on the topic is what would you do if you just got sucked in, straight into the Pokemon video game world? You're not the uh, protagonist. Should be... You're not the protagonist. You're not the main character. I feel it'd be like Pokemon Legends where they're like, hey, yeah, yeah, that's just easy, got easy. pulled through a wormhole. You get um straight Isekai. Yeah, that's that's Pokemon Legends. You get Isekai <laughs> into the world. Okay, so what are you doing? Um, I'd find somewhere safe to be first. Like, the thought of all the entries and how Pokemon are. It's like, do I need to be safe? Am I safe here? Yeah, I'd obviously find, like, the nearest town. Try to establish where I am and all that. And go from there. Like, obviously I'd want to learn about Pokemon. I'd want to train certain Pokemon and have them as my friends. Would it be any certain region or is it just... Here you go. So, what I'm thinking is, it's just a random region somewhere in the Pokemon world. You don't know mm. where you're starting until you get there. That sounds fun. <laughs> like, you could you could want Johto and get cash. You can go to every other region because the regions exist because it's the video game world. I definitely want to explore everything. Who would you pick um, as your starter Pokemon? And it could be any Pokemon. Zora, like no, no, no second guessing or thinking about it. Zora would be my starter. Like mine would be Bulbasaur, like straight up. I'm just going straight look for Bulbasaur. Once I catch Bulbasaur, that's when my journey really starts. Because for me, I would straight up take the gym challenge. I would try and become the strongest trainer in the world, if po in in the Pokemon universe. Nothing to worry about, hands down, just straight up becoming the best trainer possible. And I would look for the Mega Bracelet and Mega Stone. And with like my ability to strategize and really deep dive into things, straight up that's how I would do things. Okay, so you get um, you get sucked into the an um, the anime world for Pokemon. What are you doing? I feel I'd want to have some fun in the anime world, because, like, obviously, like we talked about earlier, a lot of the lore makes no sense. Mm. Part of me feels maybe finding Jesse and James just to figure out, like, what more about them. <laughs> so you'd want to go like, the Team Rocket route, then? Yeah, because, like, we see that, oh, they're not good as Team Rocket or whatever, but you can see how they're actually really kind people with how they treat Pokemon. And, and a few other things they've done. So, for me, what I would do is I would find the strongest trainer in the world and ask to learn from them. Be, oh, that could be good. Be mentored under them. So, either Leon, Ash, Cynthia, Steven, Alon, Anybody. Just so I can, um... Be a part of it. So, of all the strongest, who would you say is the, the strongest of everyone? Anime-wise, Leon. Okay. Leon, um, has... Um... I believe all three starters. For Galar. 
Charizard, mm -hmm. Galarian, Mr. Rhyme, Cinderace, Inteleon, Mr. Rhyme, Rillaboom, Dragapult, and Charizard. Hmm, Dragapult. And the Charizard and Rillaboom can both Gigantamax. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a team there. Yeah. So, he has th four starters, two of which Gigantamax, mm -hmm. one of um, which is a pseudo-legendary, and one is Mr. Rhyme. He is the strongest trainer in the Pokemon... One of the strongest trainers in the Pokemon anime. There's also Tobias, who had the Dark Rye. He's the Dark Rye and Latios trainer from Generation 4. Okay, now. Pokemon manga. Get sucked into the Pokemon manga world. What are you doing? Um, I don't know too much about the manga. I know it is darker than the other other things like you got pokemon being able to be cut in half um yeah people dying like literally it's wild bro you know, i'd find like where people need help the most and go there so like if it's a hospital or um a town that's needing build i would help in that sort of sense Okay. Just because I know the darker tones of Pokemon, it, it's probably very easily easier to to get killed in that, you know? Oh, for sure. For me, I would probably join the International Police. That sounds good. Thwarting the plans of Team Rocket. Yeah, so that's all my um questions related to Pokemon and what any what not. Do you have any questions for me, Seth? Anything um, that you would like to learn interesting? I mean, there's a lot I want to learn. Like, the anime, the manga, there's there's so many things I haven't seen. Mm -hmm. It's just a lot for me to look into. Like, what, what questions do you have right now that you could think about? Should I start with the manga or the anime? And if so, where should I start in either one? Okay. Manga, I highly recommend you start from the very beginning. Okay. Anime, like I said, start from Pokemon Journeys. Um, you can Google um, or YouTube some of Ash's important battles from before then. Um, the only like real battles you have to kind of look into is like Ash with Greninja, as well as like some of the Ash's battles with Charizard and Infernape. Yeah. Other than that, most of it is pretty, pretty much non-existent, and you don't have to worry about it. Okay. Um, oh, looks like Journeys is on Netflix. Yep. Which um, I have. So you could also watch the sub of it, um, and watch from the beginning of um, the uh, Mastered Eight tournament. Mm -hmm. I would recommend that. That's kind of like more recent, like what we're up to now. It's the finals of the <sighs> Masters 8, and Ash versus Leon is still going on. <coughs> yeah. Excuse me. Um, important battles for Ch um, Charizard. Charizard versus um, Iris' is Dragonite. Um, Charizard versus Magmar and Moltres. Um, as well as Charizard um, in the Charizard Valley kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and also, I would recommend looking up Charmeleon evolving into Charizard, Charizard versus Aerodactyl. That's that same fight. Um, you can kind of see how Charizard acts compared to how he was Charmeleon, because Charmander and Charmeleon loved Ash, and they follow and he followed what his orders. But it's when he evolved into yeah. Charizard that he kind of didn't do that for a long time. Just yeah, to... I remember that. He's like, Charizard, do this. And he's kind of like, uh huh. yeah, I'm going to go sit on this rock over here. Yeah, basically. And only did things when he wanted to. Yeah. Ash versus Greninja. I mean, Ash with Greninja. Um, a couple fights that I would recommend is Ash versus Thornton 
Ash versus Diantha. And Ash versus Alon final battle. Mm. Those are the best with Ash Greninja. And then Infernape. Ash versus Paul. And Sino, Ash versus Paul. Those battles. That battle was amazing. So the full six on six battle. Wonderful. Some of the best animation and battling of the Pokemon franchise. I'll definitely have to look into those. Right there. Um, and then also Ash vs. Tobias. Just, that's always just a good battle to watch. He didn't use Infernape, but it's still pretty nice to watch. Um, and then yeah, once you do all of that, you're pretty much ready for Pokemon Journeys. You pretty much know all, everything that you kind of need to know. It's definitely a lot to look over. Yeah, because um, the Pokemon manga is called Pokemon Adventures. Don't look up the best of Pokemon Adventures. Actually look up for Pokemon Adventures. It's a lot to read, but worth it. The storytelling is magnificent. The, um, the way it takes its readers seriously is also wonderful. I highly, highly recommend it. Alright. But, yeah, I, I think that about wraps up kind of everything that we kind of wanted to talk about for this episode, right? Yeah, it definitely did. We, d we talked a lot about um, Pokemon, our favorite Pokemon, why we like certain Pokemon, and that alone just took like an hour on its own, nearly. Indeed it did. Um, Which I is why we're going to have um, Scarlet and Violet be its own episode. Uh-huh. I wasn't expecting um, it to take that long, honestly, when we were just talking about everything. I, I, because we were getting in, like, Gen 4 in, like, 20 minutes in, I think. And I was yeah. like, how long? why is this taking so... Why is this going so fast? And we were just talking, talking, talking about Pokemon. Um... Mm -hmm. So yeah, our next episode, of course, like Andrew and I have already stated, it's going to be a full Scarlet and Violet episode going over every information bit, just getting us ready for the actual Scarlet and Violet. So if you don't want to be spoiled or know anything about the games, I recommend skipping that next episode. But if you don't care about the spoilers, don't care about the information that's already been given to us, including possible leaks, we'll be going over those as well. So, just a forewarning now. Anyways, this has been the Team Galactic Podcast. Making sure to have a better world, not just for you, but also your Pokemon. We've been your hosts. I'm Andrew. And I'm Justin. And we'll see you guys next Wednesday with episode discreet 3, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. A skull run. A full run through. See you later.